Deep in the heart of Taba County sits an agricultural mecca, a symbol of the way things used to be, something that requires more than just a little bit of effort from human hands. That agricultural mecca, Fielder's Mill in Junction City, one of only two water power grist mills in Georgia that are still operational. And the man who runs it, well, he's a throwback also, but in a good way. If Chris Mills could talk, this one would have a library full of stories. And no doubt, many of them would include Mike Buckner. Mike grew up on this property, and from an early age, knew what he wanted to do in life. I have been running the mill for 55 years. Uh, started when I was 14. Uh, I was, uh, at that stage of my life, I was ready to make a little money, and my grandfather had died and my grandmother was running the mill, and I decided if she'd let me run it, then I'd take over. There's been a mill here since 1840, and this is on the Patchalaga Creek, which means pigeon roost in the Creek Indian terminology. But uh, the, there's been a mill here since 1840. It was known as the John Downs Mill at that time, and my family, the fielders, came in about 1890 and took over. During my college years down at ABAC, I would come home to run the grist mill, and we would have on a Saturday morning maybe 30, 40 people or vehicles backed up waiting to get a bushel or two bushels of corn ground. Today that's all passed. That generation is gone, and we'll have three or four a year show up with corn to grind. Why is that, Mike? It's just that there are, all the small farms are gone. There's no, nobody left around in this area growing. Uh, small patches, small farms like we had at that time. One of the many reasons why Mike and his wife Debbie have gone to great lengths to preserve the mill and the 5,000 acres that surround it. For example, each year in early November, they host Harvest Days in Old Talbot, a festival dedicated to the sights, sounds, and smells of a bygone era. The mill itself, still powered by water, and the actual stones, original. Yes, over 90 years old and still going strong. Now sure, there are the minor fixes from time to time, but if that's what it takes to keep it going, then so be it, says Mike. He also takes no shortcuts when packaging the cornmeal, grits, or flour. The logo you see on the bags, printed on this. We added the printing press because we needed to print the meal bags. Uh, when there was a need for paper bags for the meal route, we had to have printed bags, and so we added a printing press. But you do realize, since that time, there's electronic wonders that you could put the bag through. Oh, oh yeah, but the fun is, is the hand-fed hand press, you know, the, the, the thought of getting your hand caught, you know, you got to be quick. <laughs> is that what makes you keep coming down here every day? Mike? Oh, yeah. Because of the old stuff. Yeah. Because uh, of the old way of life. Like the old way of life is simpler, and it's amazing that most of this equipment is over 100 years old, much older, and, but it's still operational. And we live in a society, a throwaway, dispensable society, uh, society, where if it's 20 years old, it's outdated. They bring in the grain. Uh, a lot of times the corn comes on the cob, but we have a sheller. We can actually shell the corn for them and then we can run it through a cleaner. My granddaddy in 1948 with electricity built an electric cleaner to sift the trash of weed seed out of the, of the grain. And then we, it uh, takes it upstairs by a belted conveyor, upstairs and to a pipe over to the millstone. The millstone that you see turning, it weighs about a ton. And it spins about three, 350 RPM and uh, this grain actually, actually lubricates the two stones. The bottom stone is stationary, but as the corn or, or wheat is fed down through it, the stones are so close together, they would actually be grinding rock against rock if it weren't for the grain. And then we have a meal box and that the, the, as the centrifugal force of the stone turns, it brings the, 
the ground flour meal around to an opening where it comes into a box where we can bag it at that point. Like I said, the way things used to be. Impressive, yes, but it's not the only piece of history on the property. Just a few feet from the mill sits Mike's other prized possession, good old engine number six. We created this museum because we already had so many artifacts in place. And I said, I'd like to, to develop it more into an agricultural uh, museum dating from the 1840s to 1940s, our period of time. And the, the locomotive in the track is depicting a logging railroad. Our locomotive is a Georgia locomotive built in Marietta, Georgia by the Glover family. They built about 200 locomotives for the mining and forest industry. And those locomotives were uh, dispensed and sold all over the world. But this is the only surviving global locomotive that we know of. When you grow up on a place like this and you, you pick up the stones that the Indians carried and you are looking for artifacts, it becomes part of you and, and you can't leave it. It's just part of you. My dad told me a few days before he died, we were here at the mill, and he said the first, did you, he said, do you realize the first time I saw your mother, she was making mud pies down below the dam here. And uh, that, I had never heard that story before. So it, was, it meant a lot. But yes, my, my grandfather, my mother, and of course myself grew up here. And uh, it's just part of me. Only bad part about that story, I did not get to drive the train. I feel cheated. Just kidding, Mike. 